our guest today for Touch Base in Seoul is musical actor Chun Na Young. Before coming to Seoul, she started off her career in the Netherlands, where she grew up, and then she moved on to the West End in London. She's played in major roles in the musical theatre scene, including Kim in Miss Saigon, Fontaine in Les Miserables, and Esmeralda in Notre Dame de Paris. She can perform in English, her native tongue Dutch, and most recently in Korean as well. That's right. <laughs> yes, to tell us more about her story and her career, I'm delighted to say that Miss Chun Nayan is here with us today in the studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for making the time uh, during your busy schedule. You are currently performing in the musical Rent. Yes, in the taking, Cube Art Center. Yes, yeah. taking on the role of Maureen. Why don't we start there? Can you tell us a little bit more about that role in the musical? Um, Rent is about a group of friends and they're all struggling young young artists living in New York. Um, And some of them are HIV positive, some of them are um, homosexual. I think it it talks about a lot of issues that Mm. were back then very maybe a little edgy and and, and not really um, accepted yet. Mm. Um, And I play Maureen, who is a young, bubbly, bisexual performance artist who protests against uh, gentrification in New York. As you said, those were quite edgy topics back when the musical first came out, I believe, in the 90s. Mm. I guess those are kind of edgy topics here in Korea (laughs) right now. (laughs) Definitely. How's the reception been so far? Um, It's been amazing. I mean, we live in corona times and Mm. I didn't expect people to uh, come and see the show, but we are so blessed with lots of people coming to the theatre and in the audience. So, uh, yeah, you you're, you were saying it's still edgy topics. Sure, it is still edgy. I mean, homosexuality is very edgy still in Korea. Mm. But uh, because of the corona outbreak, it, it weirdly is very um, um, relatable with mm. the AIDS, uh, HIV outbreak in the 90s in New York when people didn't know what this virus was, who had it, who doesn't have it, who has it, how can I get it? Mm. Um and people were very um, confronted with the, sh- the the short amount of time that maybe people mm. have because of this virus. And it's the same with corona all over the world right now. Sure, yeah. there are some interesting parallels there you yeah. mentioned. How has COVID-19 affected uh, the production? Did you have to do special precautions? How was the rehearsal, things like that? Um, yeah, we all had to do a temperature check before coming into rehearsal. Mm. Um the rehearsal room has been disinfected every week or daily, maybe even. Uh, we have a health check form that we have to um, fill in every day before coming into the theater. Um, yeah, and it's just interesting because uh, when Corona just started to break out in Korea, it was in January, February, and I was playing Aida in Blue Square Theater. Mm. And all of a sudden, everybody in the theater, in the audience, started to wear masks in the audience. Mm. So from one day to another, all we saw was white dots mm. of people with masks. <laughs> yeah. And that's when we all realized, oh, this is quite serious. Mm-mm. And then suddenly we there was a red alert and uh, it started to break out elsewhere in the world, in Europe and mm. in U.S. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a blessing to be able to perform now in Korea because um, Korea is actually really safe. Mm. When I look at friends living in other parts in Asia or US or in Europe. Sure, we can't, they can't my, really go to the theatre at the moment. M- yeah, All my friends like who are Korea. actors or performers are out of a job right now. Mm-hmm. It's because of Corona, so I feel very blessed. Yeah. Can we now talk a bit more about yourself, actually? I understand you grew up in the Netherlands after your parents emigrated there, is that right? My grandparents. Your grandparents, yeah. okay. So what was that like growing up in the Netherlands? And then how did you end up uh, in this career singing and performing? Uh, <laughs> how was it living? The Netherlands was great. I mm. I mean, I grew up there. I, I, I'm born there, so I didn't have a lot to compare mm. the, the place to. But um, I had a very um, joyful, free uh, childhood, I think. Mm. Um, not many hagwons that I needed to attend, like most <laughs> Korean young people here. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, but I always felt like 
I think there is a sense of feeling like an outsider when mm. you look like me in in even though it's a very liberal country mm. and I didn't really feel a lot of racism mm. back then but I was always very curious about my roots and my mother country, mother's country and um yeah and I was curious to meet people who look and speak like me <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I we always um uh, spoke Korean back at home oh so you spoke Korean yeah. back at home okay yeah. How how did you get into then uh, this career in musical theatre? It was all luck because I performed Kim in Miss Saigon in the Netherlands. The creative team um, is from London, actually, Cameron McIntosh, and they invited me over to play Fontaine uh, in Les Miserables on the West End. How old are you when you started at the uh, when you were? playing Kim in Miss I was Saigon. 21 years old. You're 21 years yeah. old, but you must have been preparing as a musical actor before then. No? Yeah, I actually debuted as Kelsey and understudied Gabriella in High School Musical. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was in the Netherlands. Okay. In the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, uh, so then I played Fontaine on the West End in Les Mis, and that same team um, opened the show Les Mis in Korea's whole and um, invited me to come and audition in Korean. And I, yeah, that was one of my dreams, actually. So That was one of your dreams, to come to Korea and yeah. perform in Korea. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, because I think when your language changes, your expression changes too. And I w was very keen on um, discovering the same part in a different language. So you <laughs> played the role Fontaine, but in Korean in Korea, was it? Yes, yes. Oh, well, how was that yeah. like? Was that the first time performing in Korean? Yes. Mm. It was very... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So well, I'm, I, I'm, It's very difficult to explain, but Korean is not my first... It is my first language, sure. but I'm more fluent in Dutch or English. Mm -hmm. But um, So because you were raised in the Netherlands, even though you spoke Korean at home, you perhaps didn't go to like a Korean school or exactly. anything like that. You didn't study it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just learning from your parents rather than actually studying it. Therefore, yeah. it must have been... There must have been an adjustment when you came to Korea and singing in Korea, right? Yeah. But I also think that there is a different part of me being expressed when I sing or act in Korean, okay. um, even though I'm not fluent, or mm. um, it, it 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 touches a more intimate part of me. I think, mm. yeah. Okay, so then mm -hmm. you, you 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 must have enjoyed it in Korea, but then you came back to Korea, right after that. So how did you end yeah. up staying in Korea? Because that was just for a tour, right? Uh, um, so the first time I played Fontaine, that was my debut in Korea, mm. and um, after that I performed in Notre Dame de Paris and I think I wasn't really prepared for the culture shock as much as I thought I was. Mm. So then I went back to England, toured with Miss Saigon in the UK and Ireland, mm. uh, performed in London Palladium in The King and I mm. and then I actually came back for the part of Aida um, and because of it was such a dream role that I wanted to play and different things in my life happened, it just felt like the right choice to come and really move here. Mm. Yeah, I heard you performed in AIDA last year in Seoul, but while doing some research, we saw in an interview that you actually it was the second time you tried to go for the role because the first time you tried out in 2016, you didn't get the role because of your Korean pronunciation. That must have been quite tough. How do you deal with that situation? Hmm. It wasn't tough. I understood. Okay. <laughs> I, I was actually grateful mm. to have been seen in the room by the creatives. Mm. And um, uh, I think it's better not to get the part when you're not ready. Sure. And I knew exactly what I had to work on. And then mm. I had three years almost to work on my Korean. And when I then auditioned for the second time, I felt more confident. Yeah. So you took lessons? Uh, you had, did you go to classes? What kind of things did you have to do? Yeah, I had Korean lessons. Um, um, I had an acting coach who who I worked with on my uh, Korean and the AIDA dialogues. Mm. Um, yeah. And then what was it like when you finally got that role that you wanted so much? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. But getting that phone call is amazing. Mm. But then you have to do the job. Mm. Um, every day mm. and until the last show mm. so I think I felt a lot of pressure I pressured myself a lot but I am very proud of myself to having overcome um, these insecurities yeah and continue to grow as a performer yeah. what's it like still 
performing here in Korea, in Korean, how's the scene different here? Do you feel any differences from perhaps Korea and London and the Netherlands? Yeah, definitely. Um, the Korean audiences are so passionate about musicals. They, they go to multiple shows in mm. a year, um, multiple times to the same show. Um, they watch uh, different casts and compare them. Um, in London... Of course, there are some musical fanatics in the mm. UK as well. Mm -hmm. But because it's such an international market, a lot of people who come in to, to see a show, they come from abroad and are sure. tourists. Right, yeah. they're tourists. They're yeah. only there for a short period. It's not like they're fanatics here. In Korea, I guess uh, uh, musical fanatics, they go to like every show pretty much. Definitely. Mm. So I can feel a stronger bond and more like a community here mm. let's say and uh, with some people who come and watch my show i i am lucky enough to build a relationship with some of them and mm. yeah that's something else and also i think korea is one of the rare countries that double cast parts mm. in in musicals in london Almost everyone does every part, eight shows a week. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so can you explain double casting? That's when there's basically two separate casts and they split the, the shows throughout the week. Is that yes. what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So now I'm double casted with uh, the actress Min kyung mm. and I do four shows a week and she does four. So that must give you more time to prepare and get ready and also have your own free time as well. Exactly. So what's your future plans now then? You've been performing Aida last year and then Rent this year. Is your plan to stay in Seoul or do you want to go back to Europe or move on to the US possibly? Mm. Oh, no, my plan is to stay here and to uh, build on my career here in Korea. Mm. But I am also open to other opportunities back in the US. I, I still have my agency in London and management in LA. But my priority right now is to build on what I have now here in mm. Korea. So yeah. you must be really enjoying life here and building that career here. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> How has the opportunities been? I mean, because sometimes in the UK, I guess, or in Europe, it can be difficult for uh, an Asian actor to yeah. kind of find bride roles and, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, forge a career. It is getting better, though. I mean, the fact that I played Fontaine in Les Mis is already pretty groundbreaking, mm. I think, because I'm not just Korean. I was Korean Dutch mm. playing a, a French lady <laughs> in a show located in London. So, mm, sure. um, but but be, even though people start to blind cast parts more and more, um, it still feels different. Sure. Yeah. And here, because that's not something that I experience and I would not able to play the part that I'm playing now in Rent or Aida in Aida, I think there are more opportunities here. But for me, my biggest struggle and uh, is to um, perfect my Korean language. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Korean fans would be happy to hear that you'll be staying and uh, they can catch you uh, in rent at the D Cube Arts Center in Seoul, as you said, until August the twenty third. We've been speaking to musical actor Chun Nayeon. Thank you for coming in today, and it's a pleasure to speak to you today. Thank you.